Because you clicked on this video, I'm going to bet that you love the high-end look of places like Pottery Barn, West Elm, and Kirkland's. I'm also going to bet that you've either ventured into one of those stores or you have browsed their website and left with disappointment and or sticker shock because everything I fall in love with from there is way out of my price range. So that's what inspired me to start this series where we take high-end inspiration and I show you how to DIY to dupe it instead of buying it to save hundreds of dollars and today we're doing it for spring. You're watching Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney and a huge thank you to Warby Parker for sponsoring today's video. Also a huge hello, thank you, and welcome back to my Whiskey Craft Buddies who are here each and every week to DIY with me. Now let's get into the first dupe. One of the biggest things you're going to see with high-end decor is mixing textures and I fell in love with these wood candlestick holders. Then I saw that Grandin Road had these mixed eucalyptus wreaths and I knew I had to dupe it. So I ended up finding these on Amazon already done to save me some time, but you can find cheaper ones that are unfinished, but I really like the color. Then I headed to Michael's because I really love their spring florals and they're 40% off right now. And I grabbed some of these fern bushes as well as some Walmart picks that I had in my stash. I use my tin snips to chop off some of the pieces. They're a lot easier to work with when they're cut up. And I originally wanted to use some floral foam, but then I realized that it wasn't going to be that cost effective because I was going to have to cover up the foam. So instead I used some of this twist tie wire from the floral section at Dollar Tree, made a circle about the size of my candle holder at the top, and then it was time to get creative. So I did some groupings of three different types of greenery, and then I used some Dollar Tree floral wire to hook it to the circle. Now bear with me. The other side, we're going to do the exact same thing, but we are going to point the top of our bushel the other way so it will look like a clockwise circle. Now here's a different view to kind of help you visualize. I put a candle in the center to help keep the shape, and then I started to take some of those wispies and use some more floral wire to hook them to the circle. You want to try to mess around with it until you get a mixture of whimsy, effortless, but also not super willy-nilly. And I know that sounds so random, but that is the vibe I was going for. I don't want it to look all kitty wampus everywhere, but I wanted some of those wispies to make it look ethereal. Then I added some Walmart eucalyptus, and you guys, their picks are so much better than Dollar Tree's. If you have a Walmart with a floral section, you've got to check it out. Here is how I was adding some additional picks to cover up that wire in the center. You can just kind of pull it over and then use a little bit more of that green wire to hook it to the circle. The nice thing about these picks is that you can bend them and make them kind of sit a certain way, but the floral wire is going to help keep them all together. Repeat that three times. You have this beautiful set and I've gotten so many requests on decor ideas for weddings, showers, all the things you could use these for so many different things. And I think I'm going to use them as a centerpiece for Easter brunch this year for my Easter tablescape because the green just screams spring and Easter and I can use them well beyond the holiday. The best part too is that when you're done, you can easily swap them out fall, winter, and beyond. Just pull the wreath off and you've got those three candlesticks because we didn't glue anything down. So quick comparison, their set was going to be $189. I did mine for about $32. That's 83% off. Quick PSA as we enter into this next one for these pretty blue eggs. Easter is early this year. It's on March 31st, so we've got to get DIYing so we can enjoy the projects. To dupe these, I'm grabbing some of these craft eggs. These came from Hobby Lobby, but you can get them anywhere. And then I love to get my decorative napkins at Marshalls or Home Goods just because their prices are the best and they have the cutest designs. I found this pack for $5.99 and I only needed one napkin. So really... I'm going to use the rest for Easter brunch, so it is really good. You can use it for a lot of different things. I am going to remove the back ply of the napkin and use my scissors to trim out these little flowers. Now, if you cannot find a napkin that looks like it matches your aesthetic or you're looking for something specific, I created my own with Peter Rabbit last year that I will link down in the description if you want to see how you can use some regular old tissue paper to make your own and make it super custom. I'm just taking some detail scissors here and cutting out as close as I can to the flowers. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be white on white, but I also want to make sure I don't have a ton of extra bulk. Once that is all trimmed out, then I'm going to take a little bit of Mod Podge, apply it with a detail brush to my egg, 
and then use my finger to kind of push it down. We are decoupaging and this is honestly one of the best things that I love doing to just zen me out. I turned on a show and I got these all covered by cutting them out and putting it on and it was just, it was super soothing to have something to focus on. You can repeat that process as many times as you like. My best tip is to do one side, let it dry, and then do the other side just so your Mod Podge doesn't stick to your table or wherever you're sitting them. And then I put mine in a thrifted wood bowl. And I think the biggest thing I love about these, not only are they quick and easy, but they also can look really great with neutral setups. So if you have a neutral house but want a little bit of color without it looking like it's clashing, this is perfect. It's also great for houses with color because you can customize it to have them be as colorful as you want. So as a quick reminder, the Pottery Barn ones were five of them for $24.50 and I was able to make six for $9 and that includes all the napkins that I will have left over for Easter. I love to find savings anywhere I can. That's the whole reason why I started duping high-end decor in the first place. And another area that I have found that you can save without sacrificing on quality is with eyewear thanks to Warby Parker. I spend so much time on the computer each and every week doing videos for my channel and my eyes were struggling. They were getting really fatigued and I knew I needed some new glasses with some blue light blocking lenses in them like yesterday, but I was having such a hard time fitting that into my schedule. Well, cue Warby Parker's at home try on program because they sent them all to me and this is a game changer for people with busy schedules like me. The process is super easy. You're gonna head to their website, answer a few questions, and they'll suggest frames for you as a starting point. You're gonna select your top five and they'll ship them to you for free and then you can try them out on your own time. The whole trying on at home before you buy thing was huge for me because I could test them out while editing. I could also wear them while playing with Finn to make sure I liked how they fit. And I could also ask my husband Alex for his opinion before deciding on a frame. The best part, there is no pressure to buy. After five days, you pack them up, send them back, and if you find a pair that you like, you can order them with your exact prescription, starting at just $95. Yes, that's with prescription lenses. I've worked with Warby Parker and have worn their glasses for a couple years now. And not only do I love the quality, but I also love that they have taken a cumbersome, time-sucking process and made it quick and easy. I know you're going to love the experience of Warby Parker as much as I did. Head over to warbyparker.com slash whiskey and wit right now to take the home try-on quiz and pick five pairs of frames to try on at home for free. That's warbyparker.com slash whiskey and wit. When it comes time for a new dupe video here on my channel, I comb all of the websites to see what catches my eye and this lemon wreath was definitely one of my top faves. So I headed out to try to find a wreath that was already made but was not super expensive and I was able to find one that I loved at Joann's. They had a ton of different options, their spring stuff was 40% off and I fell in love with this one right here. I loved it so much as is, so let's do a temporary dupe so you can use it for more than one season. The first thing I'm going to do is cut some scraps of yellow felt. That is going to allow me to help get my temporary wires hooked to my lemons. These are from Amazon and I really love them because they are more like a Meyer lemon size and I really like the coloring. They were 12 bucks for a bunch of them on Amazon, so I will link that for you down below. Once I have those felt scraps cut, I'm going to take a little bit of floral wire. I did about 10 inches add some hot glue to the back of my lemon, and then seal it down with that felt piece. What that's going to do is give some more surface area for the wire and the lemon to all adhere, and I did that 10 times. Then I'm going to trim off any excess that I have of that felt, and then we're going to weave those little pieces of the floral wire in through the wreath. This is great because you're not gonna see it. They're gonna look like they're suspended there. And honestly, it even looks like they're glued down without it being permanent, which is great because I love this wreath, like I said, and I think it would be great to be able to switch it out, add different fruits, do different things. So this is going to be a way that you can get so much more bang for your buck on this $25 wreath. I played around, added them where I thought the lemons should go, and I took some on and off a few times just to really get it how I wanted it. But other than that, it is a 10 minute project. Honestly, it takes longer for the hot glue to cool than it does to assemble it. And this thing is so beautiful. I love the pops of yellow. I am so ready for spring because the weather has been up and down where I'm at in Illinois. And I also love that I can remove the lemons. There's not gonna be any hot glue residue. And then I don't have to store this when it's not in use. I just switch out the stuff on the top and bada bing, bada boom, we're good to go. 
So that Meyer lemon wreath that I fell in love with was $229. I was able to make this one all in for around 37, which was an 83% savings. In this video last year, I duped these handcrafted terracotta bunny sculptures, and this year they came out with some mini ones, so I knew I wanted some smaller sized bunnies. I actually lucked out because Hobby Lobby in their garden section was selling the perfect size of bunnies, but they have so many different options there, Joann's, Michael's, online. Just find a bunny that you like, and we are going to make it over to give it that stone look. I lucked out because these already had the stone texture because they're not Easter. They're actually in the garden section, so they were meant to look like they should be outside. So all I needed to do was mix a little bit of white and brown paint, or you can use a taupe paint if you already have that color. I just had to get creative because I didn't. And then I used a disposable makeup sponge to mix it up and then dab it on. I wanted to make sure that I was adding color without adding a bulk of paint because if I just painted over the top, I would lose all that beautiful texture. So I'm going to stipple up and down all around until I get the coverage that I want. And then these bunnies are going to be good to go. If you have a bunny that doesn't have texture, you can easily mix in some baking soda with your paint and apply it. That's going to puff up and give you that stone effect. I think these are so pretty. I love that there is some more darkness coming through. It gives them a little bit more contrast and they go really well with the cute little eggs from earlier. The other great thing about these is that they can be styled either way. So you can keep it neutral like I'm showing here or you can just add some colorful eggs, some carrots and you are good to go for the more pastel vibes of Easter as well. So they fit either way, which I I'm a huge fan of getting more bang for your buck, as you guys know. So if I were to buy two mini bunnies from Pottery Barn, I would have paid $79. I made mine for $14, 82% savings. That's my kind of deal. It's become a pseudo tradition in these types of videos. Every time I do dupes, I also want to give you guys some printables inspired by the artwork that I'm seeing on these high-end sites. So I was loving the floral vibes, so I've got a pack of 10 files for you over on my blog. You can find it at whiskeyandwit.com slash springdupes24. All the information will be down in the description for you to check that out. I printed them out on my Canon printer, but I also have an HP that works well too. I will link both of them down below if you're in the market for a new printer. And I use my Fisker slide cut to cut them down to go into the frames. I just frame them in these from Walmart, which were literally under five bucks, but they are so pretty. And then you're good to go. Now you might be noticing that they look extra matte in the footage. I like to remove my glass from my frames when I get shots for you guys, because if not, all you would see is the glare from my window. But that is another option if you want a different look or you want it to look more like a painting. Remove the glass from your frame and you will get a more matte look versus glassy. This next project was inspired by this really fun, colorful wool felt garland on the Pottery Barn kids site. The first thing I needed to do was create a template. I also decided to have mine say happy spring instead of happy Easter because like I mentioned, Easter is early. So Easter is only going to be used till the end of March, but I wanted something that could stay up well through May for spring here in Illinois. I grabbed this fun pastel felt pack from Amazon, but you can use felt you already have or fabric. I just ended up pulling two of the brighter colors so that I was left with these five pastels. Then my template, which will be a PDF that you can download for free over on my blog. I also have the same size for Happy Easter if you'd rather do that. And I'm just cutting some pieces to the width of my letters, doubling it up and cutting it out. Instead of cutting out the letter twice, I just decided to put the template on the top. Then that way I only have to cut once and at the end I'm gonna have two letters. If I were to trace it, I would have to cut at least twice, if not three times if I cut everything by hand. So this saved me time. I just held it taut to make sure that the felt didn't move on me and it worked fine. You just wanna make sure you have some sharp scissors. These are from Amazon. They also come in fun colors, but the sharp scissors are a must. Then for the letters that had openings on the inside, before I cut them out, I just used my scissors, folded it in half to create a little slit, and then cut out the little pieces. So then that way, once I cut them out from the felt, I could take a pencil and mark the areas where I needed to repeat the process on the felt to get that cut out. 
Then to give my letters a little bit of rigidity, I used a little detailed hot glue gun to add glue and attach them right on top of each other. I tried to match them up as best I could, but no worries if they aren't perfect. You can go back through with those sharp scissors again, or you can use some little detailed snippers like I have here. These Fisker ones are great. I actually saw my friend Risa from Risa Kerbo Creative use them. She does amazing felt projects and I was influenced to go get them and they are great for little detail work. Then my last step was to string it up and because I'm doing Happy Spring, I'm not gonna have bunnies on mine, but I did find some of these little felt balls I had left over from another project. So these were just free in my stash. And that is a huge goal of mine this year is to use more stuff that I already have. I get in the habit of forgetting what I have and then buying way too much. So I'm trying to be more sustainable and use things in my craft room. So let me know down below, are you like a let's use all the things first or do you buy too much and then you're craft hoarder. It, you are, no worries, because that's how I am too. I'm using my dowel needle and some automotive like white twine that you can get at the automotive section at Dollar Tree to string these up. And the dowel needle is super helpful because it is long, but also sharp. So I can go right through these letters. The goal here is to get your thread or your yarn, whatever you're using, to go in between the two layers of the letters. You can do that by sliding the dowel needle through, but then that way you're gonna see all of your letters. They're gonna hang nicely, but you aren't gonna have the white stripe across the top of your letter. Once you have everything strung up, be sure to give yourself ample slack at the end so you can hang it wherever you want to. And I am so happy with how this turned out. I'm also really happy that I decided to do Happy Spring just because this is going to be a fun addition to my craft room for many months to come. The other great thing about this is you can use this technique for so many different things, whether you have baby showers, bridal showers, you've got birthdays coming up, like this would be really cute and happy birthday. It'd be great for graduation or senior nights to cut out the school colors. The sky's the limit with this, so I definitely want to include it in this video because we are right into party and event season. So hopefully not only will this inspire you for spring, but well beyond. So the inspiration again, $39. Mine was about 10 all in 75% off and so many ideas that you can use it for in the future. If you watched my video from last year, we made some bottle brush carrots and the great news is so many places now have great options if you wanna make your own carrot garland. I grabbed some of these carrot picks as well as these bottle brush trees from Dollar Tree to create two different variations of a garland. First, let's grab those bottle brush trees and we're gonna remove the hanger as well as the raffia bow on all of them. And then I'm going to end up trimming off that green part as well. Now this is optional, you could leave the green, but I wanted a deeper green color like in the inspiration. So I'm just using this raffia that I had left over from last year, it's from Amazon, but this deeper green color gives me more anthropology vibes versus that brighter green color that feels more whimsy to me. But if you have more whimsy decor, definitely leave it. There's nothing wrong with it. You just wanna match your aesthetic. Then I'm taking some hot glue and an additional piece of raffia, and I'm going to wrap it around that little nub that I left so I have a new topper. There's five pieces folded in half in that top section, and I just eyeballed them. They're probably between six and eight inches long and then folded in half. Once you get all of those wrapped, add some more hot glue and re-stick on those little loops so that you can add it to your garland. If you're just going to have these as decor, you don't need to add the loops back on, but I was going to string them up so it looked just like the anthropology garland. Something else you can do if the white is not your vibe is you could take some dark orange spray paint and spray right over the bottle brush carrot. Then that way you will have the deeper orange like the inspiration, but I liked the light bright of the white on there. The anthropology one is gonna set you back $28. Mine was only 10 and 64% off. I also wanted to give you this other idea for these carrots, especially if you can't find those bottle brush carrots or maybe bottle brush carrots aren't your vibe. I'm just chopping off these sticks on these larger carrots, tying on some jute twine to create a loop like we did for the other ones. I strung them all up and then I hung this on my blanket ladder. I love that it gives the vibe that they are just fresh carrots, maybe with longer stems that you just got from the garden. This also gives me Peter Rabbit vibes, which I am doing some decor around Peter Rabbit this year. So stick around and hit subscribe if you haven't already, if you're interested in that. But I think this is so cute and another idea for those carrots. 
Anytime I ask you guys for questions for a Q&A, one of the biggest things is, do you ever have fails? Well, here we go, friends. I was going to cut this project and I decided, you know what, we're not going to cut it because people probably will want to know that, you know, this happens to everyone. I wanted to make some of these 3D eggs and I was inspired by the yard ones from Kirkland's, but those were too big. So I decided to grab some scrapbook paper and these little eggs from Hobby Lobby. They're cut already in MDF, so you can slide them together and make a little stand-up 3D egg. Cool. I thought this was great. It was a great deal on sale. I was like, okay, let's do this. I'm going to trace these, and you're going to need one for each side, so you essentially need four total. I got tracing. I marked where the openings were. Fine and dandy. This is great. We're doing great. I cut the second one. And then I got ready to cut the third one and I realized I traced it on its side. This is me realizing that the bunnies are going to be on their side. So I had to do it on the second piece of scrapbook paper. Okay, fine. We're going to move past that. Then I used some Mod Podge. I put it onto the sign and let it dry so that I could use my heat activation Mod Podge hack. If you haven't seen me do this before, you put a thin coat of Mod Podge. I usually do it on wood, but I wanted to try it on MDF. Let it dry and then set your paper on top. You're going to use a Teflon sheet or butcher paper, parchment paper, whatever you have to protect your surface and then press it down until it re-engages the Mod Podge for it to stick down. Then I was able to just trim the pieces so that they were going to fit together. And I probably should have used an X-Acto knife and this is where things started going off the rails. I just did a quick little like test there to be like, okay, this is going to work and we're going to try the back. So I repeated the process with the heat on the back and then I also used a sanding block to get any extra pieces removed. And then here is where the magic did not happen. I went to force it together. I popped the one piece and as I was messing with the bottom, the other pieces started to pop off. I tried to rehook it with some heat. And as you can see with the bubbling, that eh, kind of didn't work. Then I tried to redeem it with some white paint on the edges because the MDF was sticking out far too much. And I just was like, meh, bummed. It did not turn out as well as I was hoping. Granted, I do have one good side here, so I think I might use this in a vignette downstairs trying to see the bright side, but... This was definitely one that may have ended on the cutting room floor, but I definitely wanted to share it with you because, you know, it happens. Sometimes your thoughts and what's in your mind is better than what actually happens, and that is okay. It's all part of being creative. Now, here's another funny one if you guys want to laugh at me. I decided to do the same trick with the larger ones, but with a napkin, also from Home Goods. I got it the same day that I got those ones for the eggs. I pressed it on, it was going great. And I used my little sanding block to get the tissue paper off. Super excited. I really liked how this green was turning out. I thought the butterflies were cute. And then you guys, I noticed that I got a dud pack. It's two like bottoms. Like they don't, they don't hook together. I needed a big one, you know, to be able to slide it in. So Irregardless, I turned it into a sign, which I actually really like. This looks really good with this vase, but I, this was Murphy's Law and I was banging my head against the table the whole time. So if that happens to you, do not worry. You are not alone. Like I said, it's all part of the process and the fun of being creative. That's going to do it for this round of dupes. Be sure to head down to the comments and leave me a note to let me know which project was your favorite. And also while you're down there, expand the description to learn more about Warby Parker. You can head over to their website, warbyparker.com slash whiskey and went to learn more about their home try on program. Take the quiz, select your frames and test them out for yourself. A huge thank you to them for sponsoring this video and supporting whiskey and wit. And a huge thank you to my craft buddies who are here each week to DIY with me. I'm so thankful for you guys for your support as well. And if you want to join us, be sure to hit subscribe before you leave today. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.